Premer just launched some exciting new AI features that can optimize your workflow and creative process. So let's talk about it. What is up guys, it's G here. If you're new to the channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button. I'm always sharing updates and other resources regarding Framer and web design. So today let's talk AI. We have some cool new features and in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how they work and how you can use them to optimize your workflow. First up is Wireframer. So basically this AI is gonna help you create the structure for the page that you are trying to build. So I have a blank canvas here. Let's go to the insert panel and select Wireframer. We do have some presets that we can choose from, but in this case, let's try to go for something simple. And just like any other text-based AI prompt, you can just write what you want and it'll try to create it for you. So let's say create a link tree style page. I want a profile picture, my name, a description, description, a few links, and, and with some social icons. Let's see how it goes. So it just added a fourth breakpoint because I initially had this on another page. We can delete this for now. And here it is. Let's see. One thing that it always gets wrong, no matter how many times I try to explain this, is the hierarchy here. So ideally, I wanted my name to be highlighted. So let's just copy this text, paste it here, and I'm going to move the bolder font to the top and just replace it with my name. But there we have it. The cool thing is, if you're a complete beginner, Firmer is going to give you a responsive version of the page, which is one of the biggest challenges for someone that's just starting out. We just have to center align this text. If you're new to Framer, make sure to click the link in the description below to create your free account so you can follow along. In the right panel, we have the properties that control our elements. And in this case, as you can see here in my preview, my text is left aligned. We don't want that. So I'm just going to change the alignment to the center. Perfect. Another thing that it always gets wrong is it'll always add the social links, social icons at the top. And in order to fix that, we can maybe rename this to social icons and simply drag it to the bottom. And there we have it, a simple but completely responsive and working template that I can hit publish at any time and anyone will be able to see this page live on the web. And of course, we still have to make some adjustments. So maybe for this page, I wouldn't need this huge image. So I can just hit delete. And of course, let's add my picture. I'll have it on another page. Let's copy the fill and paste it there. Paste fill. There we go. There are other adjustments that we can make. Maybe increase the gap a little bit. And let's change this to fill and just add a maximum width of maybe 400 pixels. Also change the alignment to the center. And there you go. The last step would be to add the links to each button. So I can select one of them and just add the link in the right panel, select another page or add an external URL. And that is basically it. If you're using the same prompt, one thing that I would recommend is just adding a minimum height of 100 VH. This will ensure that the content takes up at least the entire screen. But that's it. We have a working template, responsive working template that we can use as our link tree. Here again, we would just have to move these social icons to the bottom. If you want to save even more time, I created a free link and bio template that you can use right now for your own projects or use it for clients. Link in the description as well to get it for free. Now let's try a different example, a different page structure. So let's go to insert and 
create a portfolio page. Let's say create a personal portfolio page. I want my picture, name, description, then list my projects and end with a copyright text. Copyright text. Okay. It's generating. There it is. Let me just like the fourth breakpoint. And again, completely responsive, very, very simple page again, but it works. And the cool thing is you can also reply directly here in the chat. If you want to make further adjustments, there are a lot of things that you can't do right now, but let's change the project um, layout to cards instead of a list. There we go. Now it created four slots, but it kind of removed the let's bring back the project, the let's bring back each project's name plus date, something like that. Let's see how it'll behave. And for some reason, okay, let's see. No, it didn't get that. Let's try it again. No, I want a card slash grid structure plus the name of each project. There we go. Now it got it right and brought back the responsiveness. So once you have a structure that you like, it's basically just a matter of adjusting the pictures. Assuming you are completely new to Framer, this is what you could do. So I just uploaded a couple of images here. Let's copy the fill, paste that there. And I'm going to do the same thing for the project images here. Paste fill. And we just have to delete the, the little default icon. And I'm going to do the same process for every single one of them. And there we go. We have a working portfolio page in just a matter of seconds. I had to make some adjustments. As you can see here, I was doing it with you live, but it works and we have a fully functioning page. I can just hit publish at any time and share this with someone else. Now I do feel that this is in its early stages. It will almost always give you a preset of structure templates. And sometimes you're not able to change much using the chat. So right now I see two types of use cases for the wireframer. The first one is if you are a complete beginner, just created your framer account, you can do exactly as I showed you and have a working portfolio in just a matter of minutes. So this works great. Second use case is if you're more advanced, you can use this as the name suggests to create a wireframe for your next project. So let's say you want to create a landing page for your next client. You can just type in a prompt and it will create a structure for you. Of course, you can go in and change a couple of things. But my point is you can send this to your client and validate with him if you're on the right track before actually moving on to the design. And what if you want to add something to your website that Framer doesn't support natively? This is where the workshop comes in. So it's basically a plugin that Framer launched. We also have a couple of presets, but let's create a simple one. And this AI is going to create a custom code component for you and allows you to add functionality or maybe just another cool feature to your website that isn't supported natively. Let's try something simple, like create a simple scribble, like white line that follows my cursor's movement. Cursor's movement. Let's see. And it will show us this cool animation of the code that's being written in the background. And most of the time, I'll even go to chat GPT first and ask it to write a prompt for me so I can paste it here. We already have our first version ready. The line will be drawn as you move your mouse. Let's see. Oh, wow. Okay. It actually created this drawing effect. Not exactly what I wanted. Kind of cool, but that's not what I want. I want a cursor trail. Let's see if the workshop is able to fix the code. Let's give it a second. Right, so we can see in the chat that it understood what I said. 
and there we go. Perfect. This is actually looking very good. And the great thing is that it will even add some properties that you can change in the red panel to further customize that component. So this actually looked very good. We also had to make some adjustments, but that's completely normal. If you ever used AI to build custom stuff like this, you are probably used to having to work with a few different versions. So yeah, now we added a new functionality to our website that was not possible natively. Very, very cool. Love the workshop. There are lots of things that don't work. <laughs> At least for me, I tried several things. Some of them work, some of them don't work, especially if they're more complex to build. Um, that's also expected. I built one example just to show you how far we can take this. Um, I have just an image overlaying on top, but this right here, the Pac-Man game is a custom code component built entirely by the workshop. It will even show us the score, the lives remaining, the time remaining. So yeah, very cool example of how far you can take this AI. And lastly, this is not related to the last update, but since we're talking about AI, I just wanted to mention the translation. This works extremely well so if you have another language on your website you can use framers ai to basically translate your entire website in just a matter of minutes and i've used this myself on my agency website and it works very well uh we just don't love the pricing hopefully framer will dial back on the add-on pricing for the other languages soon. And that is it for this video. Very exciting new features for us. Like I said, I think there's still room to grow, but framers team has an excellent track record of shipping updates constantly. And I'm very excited to see what's coming in the next few months or even years. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe to the channel and make sure to watch this next video in which I talk about the new way of building Framer websites, scalable Framer websites using the layout templates. I'll catch you in the next one.